Welcome back to Nationwide Arena, where the Blue Jackets have played their worst home game since, what, Saturday? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tom Reed with columnist Rob Aller, columnist Todd Jones. Uh, gentlemen, we've just witnessed a 2 nothing loss to the Vancouver Canucks, who came into this building with the worst road record in the league, but you wouldn't have known it by this performance. Todd, what stuck out or did not stick out to you in watching this game? Uh, it was just brutal. I mean, I, I feel bad for the people who paid money to see this one. It had to be the worst game the Jackets played all the year, uh, especially at home. And uh, you would think, starting off a seven-game home st stand, the longest in franchise history, that it would bring some energy and emotion and get the crowd going early. And, and I don't blame the fans. It was just dead in here because there was nothing for them to, to get excited about. So it was quite surprising, but really not surprising when you think about how the team has played up and down in the last month. Yeah, they've they've been following they've have been following decent performances with clunkers, especially at home. We saw again we saw this with New Jersey the other night after playing well in Pittsburgh. Then they go to Detroit, play well, and tonight uh, no goals. Uh, as as Todd mentioned, no energy in the building. Vancouver gets a couple of goals in the second period, and you just sense right there the game was over. It was over. I mean, it was thirteen thousand in the building. It, it sounded like thirteen. Yeah because you know they didn't give the fans anything to get excited about and what's really kind of worrisome in a way is they play well against the good teams mm -hmm. and they kind of play down to the bad teams at least over the last few nights last few games and uh it's not the real good sign of a, of a of a winner but we'll see todd you know john tortorella talked about wanting to have great start in this game after losing five to one in this building against new jersey the other night they got it for like three shifts, <laughs> and then uh, there was nothing. In it. I had a great start to my second senior year of college. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that is worrisome because uh, Tortorelli even admitted he doesn't know what to do because if he knew it, he'd be telling those guys what to do, not telling just us what to do. And you know, this has been kind of dragging on here for a while now. Yeah, it's kind of it's it's a weird situation. It's almost like there's this malaise around the team. But if you look at the overall picture, because of that great winning streak in their great first three months, they're in, they're in fine shape yep. overall. Their standings, their points, yep. that's all well and good. But you start to wonder, like, if it's been a month of just kind of going up and down, yeah. at what point do bad habits set in? And at some point, do you think you can just turn it on? Yeah. I mean, yeah. they, they did so well earlier in the year because they were playing really sound, right. true to the system going after people right from the start, claiming the third period, and you're just not really seeing that consistently at all, and it's been quite a while. No, and they would overwhelm teams early in the year here. You, you, obviously, you think back to the Canadians game, St. Louis, there were other games like that. The Rangers a couple times here, even though they lost one of those games, they would get off to these great flying starts mm -hmm. and nothing. A game like this tonight, Rob, is a game when you're behind and you've got nothing going, and really where really good teams, when you think about a team like Chicago or Pittsburgh, look to their superstars to maybe have that one shift of magic to get them going. You wrote a column uh, for tomorrow's paper. Tell us a little about it and your theory about this team right now. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, every guy has to do it every night instead of having that one guy like a Crosby, right. a Taze, who can kind of carry the team during the, I don't know if you want to call this the lull of the season, but can kind of get them from January 1 through the playoffs. This team doesn't have that. I mean, they've got they've got some guys like yeah, Bob, Cam. but, no, but not Bob. offensively. Yeah, not offensively. It's always the goaltender, but they don't have it and and Torts said they're not built that way. So that's fine, but you know, your superstar really isn't on this team that's going to really help you spark you, I guess. In a game like this, I mean, they just had no offense, yeah. and maybe maybe a superstar would do that. They don't have one. So yeah, it's kind of like, like in baseball, uh, if you're not playing homer. a little bit, somebody hits a three on a homer, exactly. and you win the game 3-2 because yeah. that guy happened to you know, right. come through for you in the clutch once again. They yeah. got the, exactly. the one chance from their leading goal scorer, uh, Cam Atkinson, early right. in the third period, 2-0. Right. You, you talk about a moment where if, they, if he scores right there, you've got probably, I don't know, 17, 18 minutes left in the right. game to get back in it. Nothing, and really one of the few decent chances. They had 33 shots, but they didn't have many quality scoring chances. No, he had a breakaway, didn't, couldn't convert. Yeah. Uh, and again, it, it's kind of a hard team. Were they three and four at home since three and four January at 7? home? Yeah, they started and, uh, something like 12, three and one, 
They were one of the best home teams in the league. And, of course, that kills. I mean, the, the fan base, is, as you've written about a couple times, is starting to come back here. Yeah. We're seeing good crowds. Again, tonight, Thursday night, uh, Western Conference team, Vancouver. You, you don't expect to sell a crowd. But these are the kind of performances in back-to-back -back games that yeah. can, like... But yeah, last Saturday night, full house. Yeah, you know, Saturday night, everybody comes out, big night, right. um, and it just doesn't happen. And you get kind of let down, and it's just this weird thing where the Jackets are in this position that they just have not been in yeah. other, you know, very often. I mean, right. uh, two playoff appearances. We're not used to this, where a team is just kind of trying to, you know, paddle along. Yeah. Um, at this point of the year, usually we're looking at the draft and. And they're zombies because they're not playing well. Right. well. They're just kind of zombies now because they're they're in this spot where I don't know what what the carrot is for this team right. in, in the coming right. weeks, but uh, they got to find it because otherwise it's just going to continue. And then next thing you know, the playoffs are going to start, and they might not have a matchup that they like, and they're just not going to be playing well. So at right. some point, something's got to change. A little programming note: uh, Aaron Portsline, our, our our normal, our fantastic lead beat writer. He's taking a little break. He's, he's off for a week or so. Uh, one of our other columnists, Michael A. Race, will be back in the next couple weeks. But you're going to join me again on Saturday, Saturday, right? Saturday, I'll Saturday be Saturday here. Saturday afternoon. Yeah. We'll yeah. see if the Blue Jackets can get things going in the right direction again. They play the Red Wings at 5 o'clock. Todd, we hope you come back here very soon. Yeah, Rob and I got caught up from the Monsters beat. So <laughs> exactly. We, we're filling in for the yeah, stars. Yeah, exactly. All right, we'll see you guys again on Saturday. Again, final score 2 nothing, Vancouver. And we'll talk to you on Saturday night. And that's your cue to go hit the button. <laughs>